Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you in Jesus' name. We thank and praise God for yet another deep dive Bible study with Resurrected Hope Ministries. Welcome, welcome to each and every one of you for joining us live on Facebook. And then hello to those of you that will pick us up on YouTube on later on. God bless you in Jesus' name. I am your facilitator tonight, Lady Pastor Maria Perry. I am the Associate Pastor and First Lady of Resurrected Hope Ministries. We are a ministry that believes in equipping you, mentoring you, and launching you. So tonight is an equipping night, amen? And we would love to also give honor to the senior pastor of Resurrected Hope Ministries, Pastor Jonathan Perry, working behind the scenes, hallelujah, keeping everything in order to hopefully get this word across without any technical glitches or anything of that nature. All right, so I hope that you will be attentive on this evening because we have a word that may make some of the mamas and grandmamas clutch their pearls, but stick with me because this is something that is needed. I want to give a shout out to every pastor, every evangelist, teacher, anybody that is responsible with the assignment of proclaiming the word of God to jump on the bandwagon because this is a message that needs to go to the north, south, east, and west. And it's not happening in the church. People of God, we are the salt of the earth. We got to keep forgetting that we're the light of the world. And if we don't cry loud and spare not, the world has no hope. So do I, do I got your attention tonight already. I ain't even set the topic. <laughs> so I'm just giving a few moments for people to log in because I don't want anyone to miss any part of this message. Amen. Because it is so important. I started to... Um, make this a couple of parts because I wanted to go in deep. But then I said, no, I said, I, I think that this Bible study will be enough for you to chew on for a while. So I don't want you to choke, but I want you to chew and get all of the flavor in. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with prayer because Lord knows I'm going to need it. Mm, praise God. <laughs> and then we will get started with our lesson. So those of you that are joining, come on, come on, bring your Bible, bring your pen, and let's get started. All right, let us go into prayer. Heavenly Father, God in glory, Jesus, Savior of the world, I call on you right now, just acknowledge you as the master teacher. God, I acknowledge you as the God that knows what we as people need. I thank you for your word, because your word is so healing and life-changing, God. And you know what we need when we need it, God. So I invoke and invite your presence, your glory, your anointing, and I surrender to you, Father, and I submit to you, God, that you, Lord God, will fill me that I may, Lord, speak to the people. Lord, give me clarity of thought. And Lord, let the boldness of the Holy Ghost raise up in me that when this word goes forth, to those, oh God, that you have assigned to hear, that their hearts will be pricked, not in condemnation, but in conviction that they will turn towards you and not run away. We thank you tonight, oh God. We bind up the works of darkness, every dark and foul spirit. We command it to go and to shut up your mouth in the name of Jesus, for the Lord God Almighty is here to speak. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus name. Amen. All right, so let me reveal what the title is going to be on tonight. By the way, I'll say this one thing. Because this word needs to reach everybody it needs to reach, we are asking you to do one thing for us, and that is when you receive this word, share it with somebody. If you want to use the YouTube link, if you want to use the sh uh, Facebook link, Share it across because we can't share it all ourselves. So we need all of us as the people of God to lock arms and help one another spread the message of the gospel. Yes. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, teens and adults, elderly all across the land, we are going to talk tonight about overcoming sexual sin overcoming sexual sins. I don't know why God always chooses me to do these kinds of assignments, <laughs> but we're going to go on a journey. 
What I am not going to do tonight is fuss at you. I'm not going to nag you. I'm just going to give you the opportunity to learn something about overcoming sexual sins. Now, I, as we said, Resurrected Hope Ministries believes in equipping. And what we mean by that is it's time out for the church to just beat you up. Mm. We've had enough of that. We've had enough of the church just saying, you better, da, 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 but never giving you the tools to deal with some of the weaknesses of the flesh. Amen. Well, Resurrected Hope Ministries is going to help you tonight. If you want to get the victory, if you are struggling, then I, I compel you, I implore you to just open your heart tonight Tear down your walls of defense and hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to equip you tonight. So please have a pen so that you can write down some of the things that we're going to give you tonight. Now, I would like to say to those of you that if this is not your struggle area, sexual sins, maybe you're married and you're good. You know, you don't you don't have that struggle anymore. Well, I still want you to keep an open mind, open your heart, because you just may be the voice to help someone else. So guess what? Tonight I'm giving you, filling you up <laughs> with the tools to be able to help somebody else. Because as we've always said to you, you don't have to have a title. We're all ministers in the earth. In other words, we all as people of God have the responsibility to help the world see, help the people of God live victorious right. through whatever word God gives us to our circle of friends. All right, I've got a lot to give you tonight. So we've already used up about seven minutes of our time. All right, so first let me start out by defining um, what sexual sin is, what it really is. I want to define it so that we are all on the same page. And I do have a lot of notes today because, man, the way God was talking, even when I was driving home from work, he was talking and I was like, man, I need a pen. I need a pen. I need a pen. And now I barely can remember what he was saying. He kept adding and adding. So I really wanted to get this. OK, so sexual sin is any action, thought, or desire that violates God's standard for sexual purity. Mm -hmm. This includes not only physical acts, but also impure thoughts and desires. The Bible is clear that sexual sin is a serious offense against God, mm -hmm. and it is often has severe consequences for those that engage in it. Therefore, we as believers, when you leave your life of sin, your life of which are back towards God, and you say, yes, Lord, through repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, believers must understand that the meaning of sexual sin and how it affects your relationship with God and with others is important. Now, I grew up in, in the church where this was a topic that was not talked about. Never. If it was, they were scolding you. They were putting the fear of God in you. And they were telling you, you better get married so you don't burn. And then you were ending up with a lot of unhappy marriages because people were just getting married so they could have sex. And then after what, two or three times, they realize, wait a minute, marriage is work. Do I really like this person? Mm. And so there were ages and ages of that. But how often does the church teach you, give you tools, give you understanding about what's going on? Young people need to hear this message. Mm. Singles need to hear this message. And yes, even married couples need to hear this message. Right. Why? Because there are different types of sexual sins. Fornication, that just means having sex and you're not married. Mm -hmm. That's a sin. 
adultery. Adultery means that you are married and, and the husband or wife has sex outside of their marriage. Mm -hmm. That's sexual sin. Polygamy. That's when you're having sex with multiple people. Rape. Incest. Incest is sex with family members. Homosexuality. Mm -hmm. When you're having sex with the same sex or the same uh, gender. Mm -hmm. Bestiality. Where people sex with animals. Mm -hmm. Prostitution. Where you are selling yourself for sex. Pornography. Mm -hmm. Where you are watching images. Yes, people of God. Watching images doesn't make it okay. Just because you're not physically having it, you're having it in your mind. Sexting. That's a new word now. Mm -hmm. Okay? That didn't exist before. And that's when you think it's okay if you're using your phone to send pictures and sexual things back and forth. That is sexual immorality, masturbation, having sex with your own self. We can go on. Yes, I'm going to be raw tonight because it's time for it. The world is loud when it comes to sexual immorality. Can I get an amen in the comments? Amen. Come on, don't be scared. It's time, church, to stop hiding behind fear that you're going to lose members because you don't stand for holiness and righteousness. Well, let right. me tell you, you may not want to even join Resurrected Hope Ministries, but when we stand before God, God is surely going to say, well done, Resurrected Hope Ministries, because you've spread the word, you spread the mind of God. Hallelujah. I'm here to help you tonight. If you're struggling, I'm here to help you tonight. If you don't have an answer to share with somebody, I'm here to help you. So that's the definition of sexual sins. So when we do talk about sexual sins, we're including that list. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the impact of sexual sin on individuals and relationships is great. So we're going to first talk about it a little bit. Throughout the Bible, God has warned his people against sexual immorality. This people of God has not just begun in the 21st century. Do you know that this has been a problem for over 2000 years? Mm -hmm. My God, the, God has been dealing with this for a long time. And we're going to get into some of these scriptures. This is not new. It has just shown up in various ways. As a result, the Old Testament contains numerous laws and instructions regarding sexual conduct. That's right. All right. So even back in the Bible days, God had to set up laws to help human beings act right. Mm. At the same time, we can even see in the New Testament that it reinforces the importance of maintaining sexual purity in the Christian life. That's right. Oh, yes. For those of you that are just joining, that's what we're talking about. Overcoming sexual sins. We've got to talk about it. We've got to cry loud and spare not. But I'm not here to beat you up. We want to inform you. We want to teach you. We want to make sure that you understand completely. Amen. Amen. So like I say, it's been a struggle for a while and it's been a struggle for a while because it's in us. God created us with sexual desires in us for marriage, for the pleasure of two covenant people, married, married folks, a man and a woman coming together to enjoy it. That's it's right. built in you. So it's not something that jumps on you. But what happened was because of sin and because of evil, it has been perverted. Mm. The enemy took what God wanted to be the most beautiful and intimate thing that two human beings, I should say two living things could experience. And he made it a destructive weapon mm. all because of sin. So because that is in us naturally, it has been a struggle when we're outside of God because we're in a sin nature. And so we want to help you tonight. So why do people struggle with sexual sins? Well, let me give you, I pulled out about one, two, about six reasons why in many cases, sexual sins are a struggle. Mm. 
Okay. Number one, hey, our sin nature. We were born into sin. So human beings are inherit, inherently sinful. In other words, we're sinful first. We're learning how to live holy. We're right. sinful first. So our nature begins in a sinful state. When you give your life to God, you begin a journey of peeling off and unlearning that sinful nature. Right. So guess what? Until you receive your glorified body, there is always going to be a battle against that nature. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing as to why sexual sins is such a battle because it's in your nature. It's uh -huh. in your nature. And so we're prone to temptation. This fallen nature makes us subsex, sub mm, can't even say it, susceptible to the allure of sin. We're always being tempted, always being pulled to find out what's over there. I wonder what about that. And so because of that, our sinful nature makes sexual temptation no exception. Even if you're married, even if you're saved, it's always tapping on your shoulder because that's how the enemy wants it. He knows that there is that part in all of us. So he tries to lure us left and right. My God. The difference is when you give your life to God and you have the Holy Ghost and you start living your life towards God, that pull ought to get less and less tempting. Because why? You're strengthening your spirit and the pull and the fire of the flesh starts to decrease. We'll get into that because we're going to give you some takeaways and some actual action items that you can use to help in this area at the end of this study. So stay with me now. Man, come on. So the desire for sexual gratification is a natural, natural and powerful force. Mm -hmm. Sexual gratification is natural, but it's, it, it has to be in the right setting the way God made it. We're going to get into that. So when it's not, uh, but it can be difficult to resist when it's not appropriately channeled and godly. We're going to learn this. We're going to give you some good stuff tonight. So that's one reason why it's such a struggle is our sinful nature. Okay. Right. Number two, an over-sexualized society. Come on, my God. Have y'all ever looked at some of these commercials? I mean, the stuff that's blatantly out here now. Society promotes and glorifies sexual immorality. It's making it increasingly difficult to maintain sexual purity. Movies, television shows, music, Oh my goodness, even social media and other forms of media are always portraying casual sex, adultery, and other forms of sexual immorality like it's normal. Remember when homosexuality was in the closet? Now it's so in your face like it's a normal way of life in commercials and right. every single just about movie and series has at least one homosexuality scene in it. Mm. It's making things like it's no big deal. It's no right. big deal to live together and have sex and you're not married. Mm -hmm. It's normalizing it in the world. Overly sexualized society. This constant Exposure to sexually explicit content can desensitize individuals. It will. My God. And makes you not even sensitive. Mm. And so what do you think it's doing to our kids, our teenagers My God. that are born into this? Mm. They don't remember when Lucy and Ricardo on I Love Lucy were married. But due to the censorship, as a married couple, they could not sleep in the same bed on television. Mm -hmm. You notice they were, they were sleeping in twin beds and they were married. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. is that morality now? Now, huh, our kids don't know anything about that. Oh because anything goes. It is out there. My God. 
So over-sexualized society causes people to struggle with the sin, sexual sins. Mm -hmm. It does, because what happens is just when you got the victory, you're fighting with everything you've got. And then here's a commercial fueling it right back again. Uh. Here's a television show. It fuels it. It's almost like a fire. I'm sitting up here with the holes trying to put this fire out and you on the other side throwing gasoline. Mm. We never can put the fire out. That's right. Why? That's right. Because society, this sinful, wicked society keeps fueling it. Mm. Oh, help us, Jesus. Help us, My Jesus. All right. Number three. Why do people struggle with sexual sins? Satanic attacks. Mm. You don't think the enemy is using sexual sins as a weapon? Yes, the enemy, Satan, he actively tempts and deceives believers into sexual sins. Mm -hmm. He speaks to you. He speaks. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, oh, yeah. just visit and go see about her. Go see about him. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's a trap. He knows that sexual sin can devastate an individual's relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So he'll use it, especially if you've already shown him that it's your weak place. You've already vocalized it. You've already said, I'm struggling with. So he goes, oh, really? Mm. And he tries to set it up for you. Oh, my, 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 my. This is why believers must be vigilant and prayerful seeking God's guidance. And we're going to give you those specific tools at the end of the Bible study. I hope you're still with me. I ain't shocked you off your chair yet, have we? <laughs> Come on, the world is raw. Why are we as people of God so afraid to talk about these real topics? Well, Resurrected Hope Ministries, we talk about it. Amen. Amen. All right. So another reason why, people, why sexual sins is such a struggle is our lack of self-control. Oh, my goodness. What happens is we tend to give in to desires without even thinking about the consequences or considering whether or not it's right or wrong. That's right. We're That's living right. in a society where we don't want no rules, regulations, or to be controlled. That's why so many Christians avoid churches that are still preaching holiness and still preaching living the word. They rather go to a church that, yeah, make me shout, give me a prophecy, but let me still live my sin. You don't want to be at a church where you got pastors that are really concerned about your soul. That's what it's saying. Why? Because we don't want control. We don't want, we want to do what we want to do. We want to live as close to the edge. Mm. Ah, but God says, this is why we're having, we're living in a society where we've got folks that are out of control because there's no self-control. None. My God, it's so you're so easily given in. You get a little twitch and you go for it instead of fighting it. Get a little thought and you coddle it. My God, instead of saying no, fighting it. Why do you think the Bible says gird up the loins of your mind? You got to grab that thought and bring it in. But because it feels good, because it gives you pleasure, you have no self-control. Come on, you have made sexual pleasure your God. Mm. And God said, I am a jealous God. Mm. I'll have no other God before me. Seven. Jesus, Jesus. All right, let's keep moving here because we got a lot to give you. Another reason is broken relationships. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, broken relationships can lead us down the path towards sexual immorality. You've heard it where people, they've been hurt, their heart's been broken, so they just go out there and give themselves away to everybody. Or somebody broke their heart, so now they decide to treat every, you know, you, you got women out there that they, they'll just treat men wrong. Mm -hmm. You got men out here because they were hurt and they were disappointed. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to treat women like a dog. Mm -hmm. Broken relationships, those are bruises and internal scars that may be the reason why you have a problem with sexual sins. You got to evaluate that when we feel lonely or unwanted, when you feel hurt, yes. it can be easier to turn to someone else for comfort. 
It could be easier to, to, to give in to temporary pleasure. Don't you dare let the devil fool you because sex will always take you further than you want it to go. You thought it was going to be a few minutes of pleasure. Oh, now you got 21 years of a child you got to raise. My God, my God. Mm, help us, Jesus. Help us. And then finally, sometimes people have a problem with sex because of fear of intimacy. Mm. Mm, this one, I, I, I thought about this. And it, it means, it's for example, people fear, are, uh, fear, fear getting close to people. So they don't want a marriage and they don't want the commitment. So they rather just go out there and have lawless sex because there's no, it's just the body. I'm just going to go have sex, but I don't want the commitment. Mm. So they're too afraid to get close to anybody. So I'd rather just have disconnected sex. That's right. Oh God, help us, Jesus, mm. help us, God. So we defined what sexual sins are. We talked about why it is a struggle. And most of this that I'm giving you is natural mm -hmm. because we got to start with the natural. That's right. The consequences of engaging in sin can be far reaching. Yeah. Okay. Some of you, you're a witness. I'm a witness. I tell, I'm being transparent. You know, I, I don't want to always save. I want to always this older woman. I understand just about every situation. I wouldn't always, but I've had to confess my sins. Mm. So I'm not talking from somebody that some of y'all going out there going, oh, but you, you were born and you will always say no, honey. So mm. I'm, I know what many of you are struggling with. I've helped pull folks out of the, the pit. Mm. I've counseled people. So I get it. So I want you to understand that it can be far reaching and it can hurt one's relationships and mental health. Some of you right now, you're struggling mentally mm. and emotionally. You've got bruises and triggers and scars, and it comes from the lifestyle that you've been giving yourself over sexually. When we engage in sexual immorality, you, you can start having feelings of guilt. Some of you right. guilt is eating you up from the sexual mistakes that you've made. And it causes you to become distant from family members. It causes you to be distant from loved ones. Right. You also may struggle with low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So you think, think because somebody whistles at you and tells you, oh girl, you're looking fine. That's what builds up your self-esteem. So you give yourself over to somebody that won't even treat you right. They're just going to use you up because yourself, you don't think highly of yourself enough. Mm. And that can lead to depression and even anxiety. Yes. Yes. Do you see the tentacles of sexual sins? Mm. People, it is not just a quick act. Whew. In addition, engaging in this can lead to broken and strained relationships. That's right. Somebody that you may have been a good friend with of the opposite sex. You may have just been friends and you crossed the line. Now you've broken the friendship. It's no longer innocent. Mm. And now you've lost your friend. That's right. Oh, my God, my God. There could be repercussions of these actions and you can hurt those around you. And there's one word that oftentimes happens, and most of the time with women and girls, is shame. Oh, my God. Shame. You thought that the act was going to be something, and you felt shameful. Mm -hmm. You felt shameful that you gave yourself away, and it didn't even end up being what you thought. You right. feel shameful because as a result of you giving in to immoral sexual sins, now you've got baby after baby. So embarrassment and shame. And now you don't even want to come to the church because you feel shameful. That is a trick and a lie from the enemy. Get up off that. He wants, yes, sir, pastor. Mm -hmm. He wants to use your shame and your guilt to keep you away from God. Well, yes. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I tell you now that God has his arms wide open waiting for you to say, I just repent. And he will love you back. Mm -hmm. God is not going to shame you away. 
He no. said, I love you. I just want you to recognize that what you are doing is not pleasing to him. Mm. He doesn't want to just throw you away if you repent. Hallelujah. Finally, when we engage in sexual sin, like we said, it affects your mental health. It's common for people that uh, in, engage in these acts to feel regrets and they start to feel, you know, loathing in themselves and mm -hmm. woe is me and I'm nothing and self, you know, just beating themselves up. It, they realize that there's all kinds of psychological issues. Uh, even they, they realize that it doesn't bring real happiness. And so there's so many people that think, oh, if I go to this list of sexual things, I'll be happy. I'll feel better about mm -hmm. myself. And really what happens is you feel worse. That's it. You feel worse. Wow. So what happens is this type of lifestyle, sexual sin, and we listed them all. What this does, it will cheat you out of the real beauty and connection felt between a husband and a wife in marriage. Mm -hmm. It can sway your thinking to believe that the perverted sexual immorality is fine and that you'll compromise what pleases God. Mm, so tonight, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. You will think and believe that the perverted sexual immorality that you've been doing mm. <laughs> is fine. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you'll compromise Jesus. what is really pleasing to God. Mm. Um, so in the Bible, you know, as I said, this is not something that's new. There are three I'll pick out. David and Beth Bathsheba. Beth mm, why am I telling you? Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was an example of adultery. Second Samuel, the 11th chapter. Samson and Delilah. Samson laid his head in Delilah's lap. That's Judges 16. And even the woman that was caught in adultery, she had five husbands and six husbands. But Jesus forgave her in John, St. John, the eighth chapter. You can read those stories. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing also about sexual sins is that it really does impact us in society. And we talked about how it has caused even just the simple act of watching TV to become a struggle. Yeah. Um, there's because of sexual immorality, the morals of our society have declined, declined, and declined. People again are desensitized between what is right, and and it's passed to the next generation. Our children are exposed to more than ever. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's it's amazing what is just out there for free. Mm -hmm. My God. And then even what happens in society, you see a lot of breakdown in relationships. Now people aren't even staying married very long. People don't even want to get married now. That's right. All of that stuff is accepted. It can damage future relationships. Even health concerns happen in our society. Sexually transmitted diseases. There's an epidemic of babies just being born and these babies that are born out of um, sexual immorality you've got now because there was no covenant and no relationship together was just an act now you've got kids you have girls and boys being raised up without parents or unhealthy situations and they become adults that are bruised and broken who become your husband and your wife now uh, <laughs> You see, see the chain reaction that happens? Mm -hmm. So you, you got these, these girls just having babies after babies. They barely can raise them. Fathers running out, not being the father to their, their children. And guess what? They grow up to be hurt people hurting people. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory be to God. And then, of course, violence. You know, we now have terms that we maybe never even had before, like human trafficking. You've got people that are being abused and raped and all kinds of things. Uh, vulnerable populations like children and women are being violated because now sex is a commodity. Mm -hmm. Put a dollar sign on it and, and nobody cares. You're just a product mm. thrown from one person to another. You see what sin does. People of God, we got to wake up and cry out in the streets yes. and change the thinking.
so that people will look at it differently, not just roll over and accept what society says. Amen. I hope I'm helping you tonight. I Amen. hope I'm helping you. Amen. All right, so we talked quite a bit on the natural side, and I did that so that you can get an understanding, so you can really feel what this is about and stop believing the lie that you have been seeing on TV and in society that it's all okay. It's not okay. Uh, it's not okay. Not Hallelujah. So now let's look at this biblical, biblical perspective. So first we want to understand what God, how God designed sex for humankind. Mm -hmm. In Genesis, the second chapter, verse 24, it says, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Mm -hmm. That was God's plan from the beginning, that he put the sexual desire for man and woman, man and woman, he put it in us as to be a blessing when we come together in covenant. Mm -hmm. Do you know that sex is the highest place that a man and a woman can get close, the closest that a, a man and a woman can get together? Do you, do you know that? That the experience that you have, the intimacy, the chemistry, all of that can only be produced in that, that, that way. God gave it to us for marriage. That was God's original plan. It was never supposed to be as crazy and nasty and, and just perverted as sin created that. Sex was supposed to be a beautiful thing between husband and wife. Sex was given to humans as a blessing. Sex in itself is not a bad thing or a dirty thing. Okay? It was given and put in us by God. My God. It was created so that it brought couples together. But then sin came. The devil came. And he made it a horrible thing. He put in the dirty. He put in the violent. Yeah. He put in those things that perverted it and caused our society to be the cesspool that it is. Right. Hallelujah. The reason there is struggle is because of sin. The world has twisted the morality of the world to the point that there is no longer a sacredness oh. to sex. That it was supposed to be something sacred that a married couple look forward to uncover and unwrap like a present. And now, my God, look at how far it has come. Even with the human body. As women, there's no longer the privilege to unwrap you when you get married to your husband. Nowadays, everything you've got is out on display. So what is sacred for your husband? What is sacred now? The world is telling you it's okay. Let it all show. What's sacred for your husband? Why, are, why do you have to let the whole world know what you have? My God. First Timothy 2 and 9 says, In like manner also that the woman adorned themselves in modest apparel with shame faintness shame facedness and sobriety that's not saying you got to walk around here with your dresses down to the floor and all of that Amen. but you know when you've gone too far that's right i'm sorry but if you got to practically peel your clothes off you need to go up to another size they've got <laughs> sizes they've got clothes made for everybody type <laughs> look i got past the laughing but it's the truth. Ladies, 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 please respect yourself. Make it be the opportunity. Say, get, be the prize mm -hmm. for a man. Mm -hmm. My God, be the surprise. Don't lead with your sexuality. My oh, God. I could go. I won't even, I can go into all of that, but we got too much to go through. Um, so God made it a beautiful thing. Sin in the world of darkness made it ugly. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to get back and teach people the relevance of, of sexual sex and not let it be immoral and let it be sacred again. Amen. Amen. So now let's give you some takeaways. 
Amen. Amen. Let's give you the tools, the specific things that you can do to overcome. That's our topic. When I say overcome sexual sins, overcome sexual sins. Overcoming sexual sins requires a combination of understanding the design for sexuality, God's design. So that's what I did this, 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 what, 40 minutes. I took 40 minutes to helpfully give you the opportunity to understand sexual sins. Yes. Number one, and to understand what its original purpose was. Because what is the Bible says, with all thy getting, get understanding. Amen. Oftentimes, Amen. this is why people cannot overcome sexual sins because the church is not giving an understanding. They're just right, telling yeah. you, don't do it. Right. Why? Right. What's, the, what's the thinking behind it? So I hope I helped you there. Okay, yeah. um, and then you got to identify temptations. We're going to go over this. Mm -hmm. That means you got to get honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. What really tempts you? What's really burning in you? Okay, so we're going to get into this. And then you got to seek accountability. Okay, so don't hide in the dark. You need to, and we'll get into this. I'm just giving you an overview. Re renew your heart and mind and practice self-control. And when we follow these biblical principles, when I tell you that there are so many scriptures about sexual sins, I mean, I'm like, I couldn't believe it. The Bible has yeah. got scriptures over scriptures to talk about this very topic. If you just take time to do it, I had to just write them. I typed them all out, but we're not even going to get to them. It's too many. Mm -hmm. So God is trying to help you. So. Let's give you the takeaways. Takeaway number one, recognize the consequences of sexual sin. Okay, so first of all, keep in the forefront of your mind the consequences so that when you are tempted, these consequences will come back to you. How do you know the consequences of sin? Read your word. <laughs> now you can Google it. Google, get all the word that you can get on the inside so you know the consequences. So let me help you. Galatians 6, 7 through 8. Galatians 6, 7 through 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Wow. So if you sow into sexual sins, there is a reaping that's going to happen. May not always be a baby, may not always be a, a, a sexually transmitted disease, but there's psychological prices that you may pay. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. There are soul ties that happen. Mm -hmm. Do you know that sexual immorality all creates a soul tie? What that means is that person is forever tied in your psyche. Yeah. You can never undo or unfeel what you experience, good, bad, or indifferent. It could be 50 years and you'll remember that person. Mm. It'd be 50 years and you may remember that feeling, remember what they said, all of those different things, because it's a soul tie. My God. Some of you need to pray against and rebuke and ask Amen. God to cut those soul ties mm. so it no longer has a grip on you. Some of you are still tied to ungodly relationships that you know you ought to let go mm. and you're peeking through the blinds. God shut the door and you're peeking through the blinds. Uh. You're, you're looking on the fit, wondering where they at. I wonder what they doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you better be careful. It's a trick of the enemy. Hallelujah. Oh, he God. says, for he that soweth to his flesh shall the of the flesh reap com corruption. Yes. So if you sow, if you water, if you plant into sexual sins, you're going to reap com corruption. Hear the word, hear the word of God. He says, but he that sow it to the spirit ah, shall of the spirit reap life Come everlasting. On. On, Don't cheat yourself by sowing into the sexual sins of your flesh. Amen. It's a cheap shot. When God said, if you sow into your spirit, if you keep feeding your spirit, the pull of sexual sins will begin to diminish and you'll be able to fight it off when it raises up until God 
blesses you with the person that he wants to bless you with. Right. Stop making excuses. Stop hiding. Stop and start being honest with yourself. Some of you. That's why the first action item is recognize the consequences. It's time out to stop playing and be honest where you are at. That's right. That's right. Stop telling yourself the lies that you tell yourself. My God. Come on. Some of you, 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 you're playing the role, but God sees your heart. So it's time to be honest with yourself about where you are, whether you married, whether you're single, whether you're young or whether you're seasoned. You've got to be honest with yourself and stop lying to yourself that you are right. You know you're not all right. You know you're struggling. That's why we're going to talk about what to do about that. All right, I know, I know some of y'all's jaw is tight right now. <laughs> You're tight because you know you enjoy what you do. Mm -hmm. You know you enjoy the pleasures of sin. But God told you he'll turn you over. So some of you, you, you're tight jaw right now because you don't want to hear this because it's messing with your pleasure. Oh, glory, glory. Hey, Tamasha. It's messing with your pleasure. But I'm here to tell you, I'm, I'm here because I care about your soul. Mm. And I care about you living life more abundantly and stop living in that low condition. Glory be to God. All right. All right. Here's another takeaway, another tool to help you. Identify your triggers and your vulnerabilities. Identify those triggers, those things that stir you up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because here's this scripture in James 1, James 1, 14, and verse 14 and 15. It says, but every man, and when they say man, we're talking about humans, mm -hmm. is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. Mm -hmm. Okay. His own lust. That's true. That wow. means there's something in you that you desire. So it's already in you. So you got to identify your vulnerabilities. You have to identify your little triggers. Mm -hmm. You know what you like. That's right. And so you got to identify because the Bible says you're, you're, you can only be tempted by it if it's something you like. Mm. Let me say it again. You can only be tempted by it if it's something you like. True. So that Bible says you're drawn away by your own oh, lust. Gosh. So if you don't even know what your own lusts are, the enemy can slither right in. And he says, and enticed. You're drawn away. That means you, you take a look by your own lust, those things that, you know, give you the little twitchy twitch. And then you're enticed by it. Now you're rubbing your hand. Hmm, how can I figure out how to get that? And then the Bible says, then when lust has conceived, when you made the first call, the first step, you put on that outfit because you knew what you were trying to do. Uh -oh. You called that number. You looked on their Facebook mm -hmm. and said, it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished. When you're finished, when you're putting back on your clothes and you're driving home, mm -hmm. it bringeth forth death. Mm -hmm. Something died. Something died in you. Something died in your life because you gave into that thing. So that's why. What do you oh have to God. work on? Work on your triggers. Work on your vulnerabilities. All right, I'm going to try to get on with this. My God. Here's your other tool, your other takeaway. Trust. I'm sorry. Embrace God's grace for forgiveness and restoration. Remember I said I'm not here to beat you up. I'm here to uncover uncover the devil. That's my saying. I'm here to uncover the devil because it's time out to stop hiding because we got to confront. That's what I put in my book, Grab Fear by the Net. Yeah. Confront. That means come face to face. That's stop it. running from it. Stop hiding and come face to face, face with to that face. thing. But when you do, I want you to embrace God's grace, mm -hmm. his forgiveness and his love for you. Hear me, hear me, embrace it. In 1 John, 1 John 1 and 9, he says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you're slipping and dipping, hiding and diving, if you're struggling with giving in, don't just keep wallowing in it and saying, well, I did it now. 
No, embrace the grace of God. If you peeked in on pornography, don't stay on there. Shut it down. And yeah. right then and there at that computer, that iPhone or whatever you want, begin to confess and say, God, I messed up. Mm. That's somebody's mm. word tonight. God, forgive me. Because God said, I love you. I want to mm. see you make it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. Do you trust and believe that he'll forgive you? Don't you dare let the devil tell you a lie and cause you to run away from the yes. church and run away from God. What did God do to you that mm. you dare turn your back on him because you chose to fall into sin? God said, I had nothing but for you but love, but you love. chose to turn your back on him. Love. Well, today, turn around. Love. Resurrected Hope Ministries is here for you. Come on, we're there every Sunday at 192 Graves Road at 2.30. My God, to receive you at the altar. Hot on my shot. No shame, no guilt. We're not going to look at you with a side eye. That's we're going right. to embrace you and help you to keep moving. Hot on my shit. That's somebody's word. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. All right, here's your other takeaway. Here's your other word. Trust in God's strength to overcome every time that thing tempts you. Trust in God's strength. You can't do it by yourself. So trust in God's strength. First Corinthians 10 and 13. It says there hath no temptation taken you, but it's such as common to man. In other words, this sexual stuff is common. Don't don't feel like you on an island by yourself. This has been going on for over 2000 years. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, a whole city because of sexual sins. You think this has caught God by surprise? He's your author and the finisher of your faith. He knew you was going to have a struggle with this. Yes, he sir. says, but nothing, it hasn't taken, it says there are no temptation taking you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is faithful. God is faithful yes. who will not suffer you to be tempted. Above that you are able. I know it seems like it's something you can't overcome. It just seems so hard. No, that's what the devil wants you to think. God is telling you right now. He'll never tempt you above all, above that you are able. But he, what does he say? But with the temptation, with the temptation, yes, every time a suggestion comes, what does he say? He said he'll also make a way of escape. Yes. There is always, always, always a flashing exit sign for you to make another decision. Mm -hmm. Always. I don't care what sexual situation you in. You had an opportunity to make another decision. My Did you? God. Did you? Because God said, I always provide a way of escape. Yeah. He said that ye may be able to bear it. it. Oh, come on, y'all. You've got to read the word. Don't just read it, but apply it. And these are the things that will give you the strength to fight against sexual sins. My awesome. God. Here's another takeaway for you. Remember that victory is possible through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Don't try to fight this thing if you haven't even given your life to God. I'm talking to the people of God. If you haven't even given your life to, life to God, you don't even have the power to stand against sin because sin is your God. Sin is your Lord. You don't have the power to fight the flesh because you haven't even begun to feed your spirit. So you have the power to fight against that old sinful nature. That's so right. your first step is give your life to God. So I'm speaking now to those that have made that decision. You have been filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power in the book. by God. But you've got to yield to that power. You've oh, got to yeah. submit oh, to that yeah. power. It's not going to just make you, mm -hmm. but it's going to always tap you on your shoulder and show you the way of escape. But it's going to be up to you to walk away from it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, Philippians 4 and 13 tells us I can do all things through Christ, through Christ, through Christ that strengtheneth me. James 4 and 7 tells you submit yourselves therefore to God and resist the devil and he will flee. Some of you, that's why you find yourself caught up in sexual situations because you're not resisting the devil. So he ain't running. <laughs> you haven't even submitted yourself to God. So you finding yourself in an entanglement. <laughs> My God, here's the here's another action item takeaway. See, we giving you, we equipping you, y'all. We equipping you tonight. My God. Don't take advantage of the chances that God gives you if you do fail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Hello, don't take advantage. Yes, God says confess your sins. But the Bible says in Romans 6, 1 through 2, what shall we say then to these things? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? In other words, what the scripture is saying, don't be, don't be taken advantage because God has mercy and love towards you. So you're going to be like, well, I'm just going to do it because I'll just confess. I'll just get up here. I'll just confess. All right. Keep playing with God. Keep playing. Don't play. Make every effort that you can that is within you to fight against that pull. Yes, yes. So what else? What else? What else? Now let's look at some spiritual things that you can do. Commit to regular, regular prayer, mm -hmm. fasting, because if you fast and guess what? You ain't got the strength to get up in somebody's bed. <laughs> And scripture study. I've given you so much Bible tonight and there is so much more. Man, I would, I enjoyed this journey. I just I wish I could share the hundreds of scriptures with you. Yeah. So commit yeah. to that. Develop a daily habit of seeking. Make an effort. Make an effort. Fasting. Immersing yourself into the word of God. Uh, Galatians 5 and 16 says, Then I say then, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. All right. So but if you are doing nothing but consuming yourself with fleshly sexual images, television, people, how are you going to fight against what you were consuming? That just doesn't make sense. So the Bible tells you in Galatians 5 and 16, walk in the spirit, walk in the spirit. Psalms 119 and 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Mm, my God, the, uh, Jesus fought the devil with the word. Sure what about you? All right. Another one. Oh, here's an important one. Establish accountability. If you feel like that you can't do it by yourself and you need to tell somebody when you mess up, establish mm -hmm. a, 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 some either one person or group of people that you can entrust with being able to go to them and say, I need help. Why do you think AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, has those groups and they have sponsors, people they can call when they feel tempted to take a drink? Mm. Well, it's the same thing. You need to find somebody that you can confide in. My God, a friend that you can share your struggles with, a mentor, a support group, encouragement, somebody, because this thing is serious. You can't be so super spiritual that you're no earthly good either. Because some of you, here's another tool. Seek professional help. Sometimes you have to go to a counselor. You've got to go to a therapist. Mm -hmm. Church, stop making people feel convicted because they got to go to therapy. Come on. Hello, somebody. Sometimes what you've gone through, you may have experienced a rape or molestation or abuse. That thing is a deeper thing that you may need to talk out with somebody. So don't be ashamed. Stop right. letting shame that's cause right. you to hide. Hallelujah. So that's Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, where it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for they, their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. <laughs> All right. Two more and then we'll be done. Um, and oh, this is important. Install protective measures. Some of y'all are slipping and dipping, hiding uh -huh. and diving because you wide open. Mm. You haven't put guardrails in your life. Amen. There was a reason the old mothers and, and, and back in the day, and probably today too, didn't want opposite sex to be alone together. There was always a chaperone. Those mm -hmm. are guard. Those are protective measures. Mm -hmm. Take those practical steps. You know where you you slip up. If you can't be by yourself with your devices, your, your computer, your tablet, then don't be by yourself in the midnight hour or early in the morning because you know there's a temptation there. Yeah. If you know that there's somebody that you like, then don't be around their face all the time. You know your flesh rises up every time they come by you. Then limit your interaction with them. Yeah. Come on, there's God, you know what you need to do. Avoid certain environments. 
You know, you can't listen to certain songs. You know that you can't be around certain people, certain places, certain things. Uh, Put the guardrails up. Because this is a war, honey. This is a war. You can't be so easily. First, uh, Philippians 4 and 8. That's the think on these things scripture. Philippians 4 and 8. Mm -hmm. Think on these things. Things that are lovely. Things that are pure. Things of a good report. And pastor's favorite scripture. Titus 1 and 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. My God, I'm here to tell you, you know, you want to stop thinking about those sexual sins. Then it's time to think pure things. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians six and eight says flee fornication. You know, that's the one sin God tells us to run, get up out of there. (laughs) Yes. You, you, you find things getting kind of hot. Get up out of it and get your coat and go. Shouldn't have been there in the first place. (laughs) But don't hang around. God said, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Whoo, Jesus. And then finally, cultivate healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with individuals who share your commitment to purity, especially when you're dating. Date somebody that cares about you. Date somebody that cares about spirituality and purity. Why date someone whose flesh is on fire, who doesn't even care about holiness or God? That's why the Bible says don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. There's a reason. Because now you now you're going to yoke yourself up with somebody that you're going to have to battle all the time. Mm. Come on, y'all. And don't be with people that's going to tell you it ain't going to take all of that. Oh, that's old school. Oh, that's that's back in the day. Anything goes now. Why would you want to put yourself with somebody that's going to turn you away from what God is preaching and God is teaching? Hallelujah. So I'm here. Like I said, I know some of y'all just got you a little uncomfortable and I'm sorry. We're probably going to go over about five minutes or so. Just give me some little extra time. Um, But this thing is serious because because sexual immorality is running rapid. And everywhere that we are, and it's time for us, the people of God, to take a stand and to stand for holiness and righteousness. I'm telling you, with this, this, you share this. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on our Facebook page. Help us spread the word. If you too afraid to say it, I ain't ain't scared. Resurrect Hope Ministries isn't scared. Share it. Everything else goes viral. And I'm not saying share it because we want likes and all. I don't care about all of that. My what God. I ca- what we care about is that somebody gets delivered, set free, and encouraged. Somebody. That's what we care about. Because as Pastor always says, the word of God is life and it is light. And I hope that tonight's lesson is life and it is light to you. Mm. Tell your children, your teenagers, they're struggling. Yes. They need to know real answers, mm. not just to be fussed at and, and scared out and, and told they're going to hell. No, give them this stuff so they know what to do yes. and change their mindset. So I'm going to end with this scripture and then that's it. I'm done. I'm done. Get your offering together. If this was a, I'm going to say this to you. If this lesson was a blessing to you, please be a blessing to Resurrected Hope Ministries. We have many ways that you can give. PayPal, Zelle, GiveLify. Yeah. Go on our website. You can see all of those options. Give. Please give so we can continue to do this. But hear this scripture and then I'm done. I'm done. Hear this scripture. Hear. Hear. Come on, y'all. Hear. Hear this. Romans 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Mm. And what that means is God has revealed himself in the earth. So as far as he's concerned, there's no more excuse. Mm. He said, but because that when they knew God, Mm. they glorified him, not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And then their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. Mm. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like corruptible man Mm -hmm. to birds and four feeted beasts, creeping things. Verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts Mm -hmm. to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. 
Verse 26, I'm just going to drop down for time's sake. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind mm. to do those things which are not convenient. And I'll drop down to 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Amen. Please read the rest of Romans, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. So what God is saying is if you reject his word and you say, I'm just going to do what I want to do. I don't care what you say, Lady Perry. Then God eventually is just going to turn you over to a reprobate mind. And what that means is a desensitized mind. Since you believe that what you're doing is all right and nobody can tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Don't let God turn you over where you're no longer sensitive or convicted about it. You raise it up with indignation and attitude and God will step back and let you have your way and self-destruct. I don't want that to happen. So please take heed to God's word on tonight. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for giving me these extra five minutes. We love you. We want to help you. And if you have any other questions, or if you need to talk with us personally about your situation, we are here for you. If you don't have a church home or pastors that will watch for your soul, that you can confide in, that you know that your business won't be out in the street and they're not, not going to neglect you, Amen. then consider being a member of Resurrected Hope Ministries yes. because we want to pour into you and help you. Amen. Amen. All right. So if you want to know when we have services, please go on our website or anything else about our ministry. We hope that we can meet you one day. We hope that you can come and meet us in person every Sunday at 2.30 at 192 Graves Road in Fayetteville, Georgia. Uh, or just come on uh, on a Bible study and we'll yes. see you every every Thursday at 7.30. By the way, we have a youth Bible study too every Tuesday on Zoom at Amen. 7 o'clock. Amen. Amen. We love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Have a good evening. God bless you.